Hey everyone, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2022 Jeep Wrangler, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Roadmaster base plate kit with removable arms. But before we get into that, let's just take a minute, we'll check this one out and make sure it's gonna work for you. This is a way your Jeep can look whenever you're not hooked up to your coach and flat towing. And I think that's important uh, because you're not always gonna be pulling it behind your motorhome, right? And uh, with this, I like it. You know, I don't really think it get a whole lot better, to be honest with you. Uh, the base plate is just going to come through our plastic rock guard here. And so you have to cut out little openings. And I think it does a pretty good job of blending in. It isn't super noticeable. But with that said, I mean, these Jeeps accept accessories very well, right? So just about anyone that you put on here is going to look decent. Um, there's other base plates available that are pretty much completely visible. You'll see a crossbar that runs across all the way to the other side. So as far as the appearance goes, it's going to be entirely up to you and, and uh, kind of the look that you're going for. Right off the bat, I do want to address one of the big questions a lot of people wonder when it comes to setting up their Jeep to be flat towed. And that's what parts am I going to need? So there's going to be a total of five main components. You'll have your base plate, your tow bar, your safety cables, your tow bar wiring, and the supplemental braking system. A couple other things that I like to recommend as well is a battery charge line kit. And depending on what supplemental braking system you end up using, you may or may not need to also pick up a stoplight switch. This is what your Jeep can look like once you're all set up and I like it. You know, everything's clean, organized, easy to see and get to, um, especially, you know, with, uh, we're paired up with the Nighthawk tow bar. I think it looks awesome and it's a great fit for the Wrangler. And something I want to bring up is fitment. You know, when it comes to these base plates and Jeeps, uh, with there being so many different submodels, it's really important to utilize our fit guide, uh, the drop down menu in our fit guide, see some of the install notes and tech tips on the web page, and make sure that this is going to pair up with your Wrangler. With this particular one, it's going to work with a ton of the different types of submodels, but uh, I'd rather be safe than sorry. And if it turns out this isn't a fit for your particular Wrangler, chances are really good there will be a base plate available for it. I do want to touch base on the use of a high-low adapter, which is this piece right here coming out of the back of our motorhome's hitch. And I think it's really important, especially with these Jeeps, because it's so popular to you know, put larger tires on these, lift kits, so on and so forth. And once you're all set up, what you're looking for is your tow bar to be level whenever you're gonna be pulling your vehicle down the road. And so to help figure out, you know, or figure out rather if you're gonna need a high-low adapter or not, what you can do is pull your Jeep up behind your motorhome, about like this, uh, preferably on level ground, and take a couple of measurements. So you'd wanna measure from the uh, center of the attachment point on your base plate, and then the center of the hitch pin hole on your motorhome and you can compare those measurements here. And what you're looking for is that measurement to be within three inches of each other, right? That's kind of the, the tolerance or the sweet spot for our tow bar. So for example, on our vehicle here today, our base plate height was 17 inches, motorhome was 22, that's a different of five. So we are out of that, out of that safe range. So we used a four inch drop high-low adapter. So it lowered, that attachment point down and got us really close to being level and that'll really help uh, to pull our Jeep down the road correctly. Other than that, when it comes down to it, a really nice setup, you know, it's tried and true. We've done a ton of them here and they work out really well. Now, as far as the insulation goes, uh, you know, these Jeeps really aren't too bad to work on. You'll have to pull your front bumper off, uh, do a little bit of drilling, but that's pretty typical on uh, on the Wrangler, uh, especially compared to some of the other base plates. So take your time, you should be in pretty good shape. Uh, with that said, if this is something you don't, don't have the time to do or feel like messing with it, I completely understand that. You can always use our dealer locator to hopefully help kind of get you going in the right direction as far as finding a shop that can do it for you. But uh, with that in mind, why don't we go ahead and get started on it now? 
To begin our installation, we're going to be here at the front of our Jeep and we're going to need to remove our bumper and our rot guard. Now, before we even get started, you want to make sure to identify uh, what you got going on because uh, with this base plate, you know, it fits a lot of different models. Some will have a plastic bumper and a metal rot guard. Some will have metal bumper, metal rot guard, and then you have some like ours where it's plastic bumper, plastic rot guard. So that's going to kind of dictate a couple different steps that you might need to do depending on your setup. But uh, with that said, on ours, very first thing we can do is come over to the passenger side, kind of right here in this area behind the bumper and get an electrical connector uh, unplugged. Here's the connector. And with it, just push down on this tab here and separate the two ends. Moving up top now, we have a plastic piece here behind our bumper and on each side of it, we're gonna have a push pin fastener that we need to pull out. Here's the push pin and to get these out, you can just take flat head screwdriver, pry underneath the head of it and you're able to work the base out. And from this point on, whatever we do to one side of our Jeep, we're also gonna to do to the other side because it'll be set up the exact same way. Underneath the Jeep now, along the bottom edge of the bumper, our rock guard is attached to it with uh, eight push pin fasteners, just like this. So they kind of run all the way across. And same concept as the other one, your trim tool or a flathead screwdriver, and just pry these out. The rest of them are kind of just buried a little bit up in these little pockets. And honestly, after doing so many of these Jeeps, I really don't have a great trick to, to make it easier to get these out. So we'll just have to kind of work in there and get them removed. With all the push pins removed, uh, on the bottom side of our rock guard here, on each side we're gonna have an eight millimeter head screw. So I got the other side removed already. And once we pull this one out, you should be able to lower our rock guard down and set it off to the side for now. We'll have this metal piece that we can get removed. On each end of it, you'll have a 16 millimeter head bolt. Pull both of those out, and then you should be able to just kind of push up on it and get it removed. At this point, we can remove the hardware that's actually holding our bumper beam on. And on each side, uh, we're going to have a total of four 18 millimeter head nuts. So two on this side of the frame rail, two on this side, just right up here tucked in behind our bumper. Here's what a couple of nuts look like. And we'll take our 18 millimeter socket, get them removed. Something that I like to do for one of the attachment points on each side here, whenever you get the nut removed, I like to take just one of them, just thread it back on a couple turns. That way when we get all the other ones removed, we still have at least one nut kind of supporting the bumper. That way it just don't fall off. Definitely makes uh, this much more manageable if you have someone that can help you out with this part, but I removed the, the two nuts that we left on hand tight and now we can work our bumper off from the Jeep and set it to the side. On the side of our frame rail, we're gonna have what they call frame stiffeners, just these pieces here, and we're gonna get them removed. There's one 16 millimeter head bolt. Pull that out. And we're not gonna be replacing these. So we have this one and then one just like it, the inside portion of our frame. What we can do now is grab that uh, metal piece that we removed from the front and there's a diagram in the instructions we're going to have to trim it. So we're just keeping these little pieces here. It's pretty thick steel so if you got a cutoff wheel that'd be ideal or a grinder like this or um, you know sawzall something like that should should work as well. That's the piece that we're going to hold on to, and I'm going to do the same exact thing on the other side of it. Took our pieces and where we cut it, I just came back and kind of smoothed out some of the rough edges, put some black paint 
over the bare metal. And these are gonna go back in place here and you're gonna use this bolt, or these bolts rather, that come with the kit. And I'm gonna try to get it in its original position. Just tighten them down. We're gonna have a couple of holes in our frame now that we need to enlarge for the 9 16th bit. And I circled them, we have this one and this one. And when we drill, you wanna go all the way through, all right? To the other side of the frame. So we'll go ahead when we're doing this, try to stay as straight as possible. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get this done here. To help keep that bare metal protected, I'm gonna come back with a paint stick and put a coating on it. Once all your holes are drilled, uh, we can take our base plate, and these are side specific, so check your instructions. Kind of a quick way to tell the safety chain attachment point, that's gonna be towards the center of the Jeep. But um, what we're gonna do is take this, kind of rotate it up into place, and every, everyone, every Jeep is gonna be a little bit different. Sometimes you'll have quite a bit of play in between the base plate and the frame. And so the kit comes with a bunch of extra washers that you can utilize to kind of fill that void, right? So I'm just kind of looking down and seeing, okay, there's a couple spots here that could benefit from that. And uh, so what I've done is just put marks on what ones I'm gonna fill. And it's a lot easier to do this now as opposed to trying to sneak washers in you know, in between the frame and in between this and, and kind of go through all that trouble. So we'll get our washer set up on here now. And like I said, some of you might have to put two, three, four. Others might, ha might, have, might not have to use any at all. So it's just gonna be uh, dependent on your Jeep and the base plate and things of that nature. What I did, the spots that I wanted to add washers, I just took, took the washers, these half inch ones, and I just took packing tape taped them to the openings there and then cut the center out. That way these will be pretty much in place when we put this in and uh, make getting this installed much easier. We'll get our base plate into position. Get it lined up here. I'm trying not to have the washers get moved, but we'll do our best here. If you're having a hard time getting this to line up and everything, you can always take a pry bar or something and kind of do one of those deals to get everything centered. And then for the time being, we're gonna take the factory hardware that was attaching those little support brackets. Uh, we're gonna take that, thread that in hand tight on each side. That way the base plate will stay in position start to get the rest of our hardware in place. So for this attachment point here, you can take one of the long bolts, put on a flat washer, and all the hardware that we're gonna use to secure the base plate, we'll put some of this red Loctite on the threads, which you can grab here at each trailer. But this will just simply pass all the way through. Here's where it comes out. We'll follow that up with a, a flat washer a split lock washer and a nut. We'll get that hand tight for now. For this attachment point up here, you'll take another long bolt and a flat washer. And the gap in uh, this area is pretty significant, so they give you two of these pipe spacers to fill that void. Uh, now is a good time to kind of eyeball that, and if you need to use an additional washer or whatever, you know, figure that out. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So in my hand here, we'll kind of do one of these deals. Start to get the bolt through, pushed out, and then once it starts to come out on this gap, we'll do the same thing with our washer and our pipe spacer here. Once it's all the way through, flat washer, split lock washer, 
and a hex nut. For this attachment point, you'll have this bolt, and you can put on split lock washer, and then a flat washer, and then from the bottom, you know, a handle nut will go in there, and that's how you'll bolt it together. But it seems like a lot of times, you know, you try to put the bolt in there, and it just, this one isn't really bad, but um, it just won't line up or be kind of wonky. So I like to just enlarge a hole a little bit with a bit here to, to make that a little easier. Take our hardware and a piece of advice too, before you even bother putting this up there and putting your Loctite on and stuff, take this and thread it in here and just make sure it's smooth because sometimes paint can kind of end up on the threads and then just fight you and everything. So uh, you can also put a small bend in the wire. That way it'll sit flat. So we'll push this up. up here and get our hardware started. I removed our stock bolts that we had in there and put our Loctite on those and get them started again. And then what we want to do is make sure that you know our base plate is going to line up with our bumper beam uh, holes here and a lot of times it's pretty close it seems like you can never get it exactly perfect, but if you need to, you can always grab a pry tool and kind of work it around. And I'll usually just leave it in there, get it relatively close. Then we can snug everything down here. So our stock bolts, this is 16 millimeter. And for the new bolts, uh, we're going to use a three-quarter inch socket and wrench. Now we want to make sure to come back with a torque wrench and tighten down all the hardware to the amount specified in the instructions. Our handle nut here, the part that's hanging down, we can get that removed. So you can just work that back and forth until it breaks off. And what I did was just kind of bend this a little bit when we were putting that up there. So just get that roughly back into position. Not a bad idea to double check, make sure the base plate is still lined up with the flange here where our bumper bolts are gonna go through. Ours is really close. Sometimes you can take a pry bar and manipulate it a little bit, but regardless if it's almost spot on or not, what I like to do is take a, a bit again and just open them up a little bit, right? Um, and that just makes the installation of the bumper much easier because you know, with both sides on, if one's off a little bit, it might get hung up, so on and so forth. So just gonna kind of knock the metal down a little bit and uh, go from there. Went ahead, put a little paint uh, on the openings that we enlarged a little bit, just so we don't have bare metal. And once you get the other side of the base plate on, it goes on exact same way. Uh, now would be a great time to start thinking about some of your other flat towing components like your wiring your braking system things like that because with the bumper out of the way a lot of times it can make it easier to route wires and and kind of get a few more things set up um, so that's exactly what i'm going to do um, and once we get done with that we can get our bumper back on get our rock guard trimmed and get everything put back together i got our components routed and, and everything like we talked about and now at this point, we can uh, take the rock guard here and trim it out. That way we can reinstall it. It'll clear our base plate and everything else. So there's a diagram in the instructions. You can follow that. Um, also hold it up and eyeball it. Don't be surprised if you have to cut a little more out than what it says, just because every vehicle is a little different, right? And how it fits is a little different. So keep that in mind. But I'm going to radius these edges here with a hole saw and give us a little cleaner look. And as far as trimming the rest of it out, I'm gonna use a multi-tool, but you can use a jigsaw or 
you know, Dremel tool, whatever you got. So get this completely cut out. We got a rock guard trimmed, kind of ready to go. So at this point, we'll take our bumper beam, line that back up, and resecure it the opposite way that we removed it. We can get our underbody panel put back in place now, and we're going to reinstall all of our push pins other than two. Uh, and that's because the uh, electrical bracket that we're going to use will utilize these openings. But that said, these can kind of be a pain to get back installed because they're just buried up there. And so what I found that works pretty good, just take some needle nose pliers and grip it like this and pull that the bottom piece almost, almost to where it's completely detached from here. Seems like, uh, you know, it, you can get it started a little bit easier and then just kind of push the whole thing into place and uh, goes in there much easier than if you just try to get in there with your hands and get it lined up and everything else. Before you uh, secure this portion, you know, with those two screws, if you're going to use this bracket, now's the time to do it. So that's why I left two of the push pins out because these bolts are going to utilize those openings. So you put bolt flat washer and a spacer block and I'll give you two of them here I can manage to do this all at once you might just do one at a time here so this will line up and it's really tricky to see you know with the bumper and everything on but where the bolt comes up through into the bumper beam that's where you take a nylon lock nut and get it started. Come back with a 916 socket and wrench and snug them up. At this point, I went ahead, put those two screws back in, and we're all wrapped up. So that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Roadmaster base plate kit with removable arms on our 2022 Jeep Wrangler.